hold on. Okay. Okay, then I'll start. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, I'm going to talk about well, the the title on the schedule was a bit misleading because I can't give a lot of detail about Switch, but I'm talk about I'm going to talk about porting the King Dreams game to Godot so that it goes on the Switch. So it's the the code base from the old game, the original code base. Let's see the year. Yeah, so. Oh, you can't really see it, but 1993, old code base. And so I'm going to go a bit into, like, first of all, why I use Godot, and then what are the, the strategies that we use when we have this kind of problem, and then uh, what happens specifically with this, with this game. And then a bit about the switch. So why use Godot? I think. Uh, because I was set up to use Godot and I had it running on the switch and so for me it was easy honestly like nowadays you use SDL when you have this kind of thing where it's an old game and you want to put it on a modern system even a console SDL works it's not gonna have all the features of Godot but you know in this game Godot is doing the similar task that SDL would do. It's basically your operating system layer. So you make your game run on Godot, it runs on your PC, and then you, tr you test it on the console, maybe on your phone, whatever. It'll run where wherever Godot runs, right? So when we want to take one of these games and put it, in this case, in Godot, we look at the main loop. This is classic, you know, basic game architecture you have this main loop somewhere in your game and so you want to do this you want to inject input from the engine there and you then you want to take the frame and, and draw it on the screen give it to Godot draw it on the screen and so you take this that comes from the original code and you sort of uh, take all the pieces and you put it put them somewhere in Godot and so uh, Basically, we have two methods of doing this. One method is using the main loop class, which is kind of obscure. You all use it when you use the scene. The, so the, the scene tree, which is like the root of the scene system, is a main loop implementation that has these methods. So here you can see like there's input, there's uh, iteration, there's init. It's all the same. All these elements in this sort of prototype game loop, they are here in Godot. This is the Godot main loop object. So you, uh, you, you take the original main loop from the game and you put it, all the pieces, you put them here and you have your, the game running on top of Godot, right? So it's, it will replace the scene tree, so you're not going to have the scene but it's a very low level implementation. There's not gonna be seen. There's resources, maybe you can use them, maybe not. You can potentially link a, a runtime, very small runtime, because you take a, out all the scene stuff, all the scripting, maybe. The cons is, again, there's no scene. It's very low level, and you have to do this thing to run it. So you have to use this this thing on the, on the uh, project properties to say use this main loop instead of the scene instead of the scene main loop. Yeah, just, just to clarify the scene because it may not be clear in Godot the scene tree, you know, the node go is just like an implementation of main loop. You can do a different main loop that is not a scene tree. You can create something like Unity uses the tree one by generating main loop. Uh, it's like a main loop is like a higher level. Uh, scene tree is a higher level main loop. Right, it's an uh, implementation of the main loop class. So here you can replace the scene and put your own main loop here, and your game runs there. The other method is use a node. So you, you take a node, and you use all the lifecycle stuff of a node. Here's the you know, initialization, there's the, the process. Somewhere you take the input, it's not here, but you know, here's the when you quit. And it's kind of the same, but you have the scene, so you have you can put 
other things. You can put other nodes, you can do transition, maybe you can have multiple games and you each one is one different node and you transition between all of them. But you have to link the entire, you know, the entire scene system, right? But this is a uh, another option. And so the specifically the main loop from the keen game, it's not at all like the like that main loop, like that ideal main loop that we saw at the beginning. It's basically it's a bunch of loops that are nested one inside the other. So for example, the demo function calls the control panel function and then the control panel calls the show help function and each one of those has like an infinite loop inside that takes care of all the main loop of the game so there's no way to separate this this is all like the and they do this where like this is a function that waits for a uh, for input for a number of frames and this is uh, an infinite loop that takes over the main loop of the game and so it's impossible to to do any of the things that we saw on the previous slides. So what we had to do is we had to run on a thread. We had to run this on a thread and then take, you know, think with the thread, give the input and then take out the frames. And uh, and I think, uh, yeah, so, and so here's some examples. So this is uh, the thing that thinks with the thread. This is a semaphore. It sings the frames, and then uh, it takes a, a, a texture, and then it shows it on the screen. On the on the screen, this texture is like a. This is one frame of the game, and so on each iteration of the engine, we take one frame and we show it, and we give the input somewhere else. We give the input, and then the game has uh, all the operating system calls that it does. I basically made a, a this this API, which is like a bunch of C functions that the game calls to do things. You know, all the operating systems, all the file access is here, all the you know memory allocation, sound, everything. The original code you have to change everything to call this API, and then this API goes to the engine. And so what I did is I used a node that inherits uh, uh, a texture. Some of the calls from the game go into a, a shitty script because it was just easier. So, for example, this is the original game. It calls this play sound function. And then this is my function that does a call deferred like this. And then this call ends up in like a shitty script thing that uh, uses a node to play a sound. So. This is useful. This is where I take advantage of having nodes and having, you know, I have shitty scripts so I can do this kind of thing. This isn't, you know, you, I don't need like performance or anything. I just, it has to be easy. So, and this call deferred, it takes the call out of the thread because remember this is running on a thread and this is the scene. So we can't do this on a, we can't do this on a thread. So this, this takes the call out of the thread. And so this is the game running on the editor. And as you can see, that node, the root node, is the is like a sprite node. And it's showing a sprite. And then there's a few nodes with music. And the game just uh, runs inside the editor. I think it takes input from the mouse, but not from the keys. I don't know what happens there, but it works it it works accidentally it's ne it's not meant to work on the editor but it's a interesting i don't know accident that happened so the old dos code had some some issues that you have to fix uh, one of the issues is they read from memory directly into like a struct from not from memory from a file they read directly into a a struct into memory and so these structs, they get padded by modern compilers, and so there's extra space, and so the layout on the file doesn't match the layout on in memory, and so that would crash or give you like a, you know, uh, uh, broken levels. I had levels with no collision and stuff like that. You fall through the ground as long as you, as soon as you enter the level. And so here's an example. They used to do this. They 
well, this is allocation, and then they read directly into this pointer the entire length of the file. And so here I change it. It's a very small change, but you can see I change it to first I read two bytes and put them on the first element, and then I read the rest of the minus two because I already read the, the two bytes. And, and the because this struct is, fu is padded after the first two bytes. So I have to read the first and then read this, and this works. And as you can see, they used to call close, and now I, I change it to call OS close, which goes into a Godot file access close. Another thing they do is, the, again, this like uh, infinite, infinite loops. Infinite loop that waits for a key press that comes from an interruption from the OS. And so this infinite loop, obviously, it's not going to do anything in a modern system because no one is changing this, uh, this like uh, variable. And so it becomes, this is not the same function exactly, but it's similar, right? It's reading the controller and then it's this wait for v blank. It's like a, it syncs with the thread, with the main thread, basically. This thread, not only is it like a busy wait, it also it takes over the thread. And so sometimes, depending on the system, there's this, it's going to be stuck on this thread forever, even if you put input. So, you know, you have to do some kind of system call. In that case, it's waiting for the blank. Maybe the input co uh, call is also a, a system call. I don't remember, but, you know, these kind of things. There's like 40 places where this happens, and you have to go and hunt, hunt down each of them. Same with the reading of the, of the file. So on the switch, it was very easy to run this on the switch. This game was, you know, very, very fast. Obviously, it's going to be very fast on modern hardware. The original frames are three, 320 by 200. So I had to, you know, has black bars here. Uh, I put original music. Uh, some changes to the, to the help texts uh, and the controllers pretty much you know pretty simple uh, to solve the the switch has this thing where you know sometimes you take out the controller sometimes you split them sometimes you so all controllers go in as if they were player one so you can you can play like cooperative everyone controls this guy uh, it, it was this port in particular, there's no issues because it's such a performant game, you know. It's a game that used to run on like a one megabyte RAM system, so it, it's going to run fine on, on a switch. And this is the release date. February 2nd? No, that's wrong. It's February 7th. That's wrong. But it's coming out on February 7th. I think it's tomorrow or Thursday. Uh, all these territories. And uh, that's it. Questions? <laughs> Thank you. How did I get the IP yeah, for this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure how, but there's like this, this Keen Dreams is like chapter 3.5. It's in between chapters 1 to 3 and 4 to 6. And it was like a different kind of release that they did. And it got lost in like when they sold the company and then they sold again and etc. And so Somebody had this license and they sold it for like a thousand dollars on a Kickstarter a few a few years ago, and so, so yeah, somebody bought it, and they all the paperwork checks out, and so they we <coughs> got in touch, and that's how we. This is it's you know it's all properly licensed and everything. Mm. Question. Mm. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure about the assets, but 
would that mean that it should be possible if you and the producer agree, or like the owner agree, to also make this the code for this port open? Make the code for this port open. Not the switch bar, but like all the yeah. instruction that you made that could that make make it uh, like run in games in Godot on Linux, for example. Right. Use the thing as a learning resource for how to talk and monitor the game to override the main loop on the server. Yeah, maybe we can we can try. I mean this. Yeah, the the original code is uh, I think GPL or something, or not the original, but mm -hmm. the version you can. Oh. Yeah, the like a bunch of these screenshots that I this one for example I took it for the GitHub yesterday for from GitHub of this code so so maybe this I don't see a reason why this wouldn't be but yeah, I don't know I don't know I mean, yeah. to you and the guy. yeah we can try yeah. mm. Mm. What version of Godot did you use? What version of Godot? <coughs> uh, hold on wait 2.1.5 point custom build. <laughs> There's not a lot of custom stuff. I uh, had to do some like uh, file manipul file and memory manipulation because there's in the switch there's limitations on how much you read from the from the disk basically, and so you certain things you don't want to stream them and certain things you, you want to cache when you write and when you read. So there's a little bit of that, but for the most part it's one of these 2.1. Yeah. Yeah. Um, More questions? How much does it cost on Switch? Ten dollars. Four hour game. I think oh it's yeah. I think it's already on Steam. Ah. It's been for a while, yeah. Steam version is actually all game too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and the SDL. So sorry. Yeah, I was just uh, I was just gonna put eight hundred. Uh, on so what? The sorry. Instruction is an actual port of the Goat game to SDL two. So that's why I asked him two days ago, why didn't you use SDL two switch port? was not available when you when you yeah. started working on that. Yeah, the Steam people they probably did all of this pretty much. Although you can uh, compile if you compile standalone this code base, you can tell the compiler to pack the structs without padding, so so you don't have the padding problem. So you don't have to solve that problem. But all the other problems you have to solve them. So they probably did the, there's probably a talk of a guy explaining how to do this on SDL. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.